I'm going to admit something here. I didn't even know this film existed. We are talking Texas Chainsaw from 2013, also known as Texas Chainsaw 3D. Now, I actually thought this was the 2003 movie just released in 3D. I didn't realise it was a completely separate movie. Um, so, yeah. So all this time I didn't even realise this film actually was a single entity. So I have just watched it um, for the first time. And uh, it's a little bit like the Halloween uh, of 2018 where it's kind of a direct sequel from the original movie uh, that kind of ignores all the kind of previous kind of entries. So... Um, this movie primarily takes place uh, 39 years later than the original film. And we see a kind of a, a recap from the original kind of during the kind of the credits. And the, the, the this review is going to have some spoilers in there because I have to talk about some things in it. But yeah, so we see that they're in the, um, the, 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 after the events of the first film, uh, they essentially, the police and a bunch of kind of vigilantes kind of turn up and, um, ultimately kill the Sawyer family, which was, of course, Leatherface's family. Um, but there was kind of, the movie kind of, it makes them, uh, the Sawyers seem somewhat kind of, uh, victims because this kind of vigilante group are a little bit kind of trigger happy, but Leatherface escapes. And we see that there is a, um, like a baby that essentially is part of this kind of family that um, someone, one of this kind of group of vigilantes ends up kind of takes for their own. Uh, now cut to 39 years later, we have a 25 year old grown up baby called Heather. Don't know how that works out, but there you go. And um, she ends up kind of getting this kind of letter from her real grandmother, which she doesn't know the truth, and ultimately kind of sort of leaving her this particular kind of property. And she kind of ends up going there with her friends. And of course, Leatherface is still kind of living in the basement and causes trouble, you might say. That's your basic kind of crux of the movie. So uh, what do we think works in this movie? OK, there, there are some logic issues. Let's just say that. We'll come back on to that. But... Um, you know, I think I would say the the movie is quite well made on a technical standpoint. You know, it's, it, remind, it does remind me a little bit of the 2003 remake, which I thought this was actually the same film. Uh, because it's kind of like slickness of production. You know, it looks like it's kind of uh, well put together. This kind of this mansion that this kind of uh, uh, Alexander Daddario's character, Heather, um, kind of inherits looks great i think it's a great location um i think the cast will do a pretty good job here you know it's filmed in a sort of a confident way and i think the kind of this looks like the set design um the, the the practical vfx they use i think are very strong uh, so yeah I, I think it's like a well put together film on a kind of a technical basis here it looks like it's um you know it does have some reasonable kind of production value which i kind of appreciated here I think, um, I mean, Leatherface uses his chainsaw a reasonable amount in this um, this movie. I find that, you know, in some cases you might find it's it's not used as much in some films. Uh, this film, he does use it quite a bit, and we do see, you know, him chopping people up with it. Um, and, you know, I, I obviously, it's, it's, it is pretty gory at times, so they do, we do kind of see a fair amount of kind of gore on screen. It's, it's the practical side of it. Is, is kind of handled well. Um, Alexander Daddario as our kind of our main sort of character, Heather, I think makes for a likable lead, lead, lead actress here. And, uh, you know, I think she's, um, uh, I mean, she's very much played to a stereotype, to be fair, but I think she does a good job. As to the, the majority of the cast, you know, the, these roles aren't exactly, um, you know, well-written, necessarily deep roles, but, you know, I think everyone does a pretty good job here. And the movie tries to do something a little, little different with the, with the franchise and the fact that it tries to make um, Leatherface and ultimately the Sawyer family somewhat kind of anti-heroes, which I have, let's just say, mixed feelings of. I mean, I appreciate a trying to do something different with a, with a property like this, you know. You know, what is not just kind of like the same rinse and repeat. And in that respect, 
I appreciate it. You know, I, I think, you know, at least it isn't just trying to repeat the first film, you know, uh, over and over again. It is trying to have a different perspective on it. So, I, you know, hats off for that. But there's a flip side to that kind, which we'll come on to. Um, it's a quite a fast-paced film. It doesn't take too long before the kind of the killing starts. So if you just want some kind of like slasher, gory goodness, and I think this movie has some entertainment value. Um, you know, like I said, I was quite enthralled with the movie. I didn't really feel the need to kind of check my phone or turn it off and kind of think, oh god, I just need to. You know, it, it kind of kept me engaged the whole way through, and um, you know. There are some uh, relatively kind of like violent kind of set pieces. So what doesn't work? I mean, I think this movie, the movie's main crime here is it's just quite dumb. Um, like I said, the, the whole the whole concept here is um, this baby was taken away from this kind of the the scene of this uh, the original massacre when they were a baby, you know, and then we we catch up in two thousand and twelve, which is thirty nine years. But then we have a 25-year-old Alexander Dodorio, who, you know, and let's be honest, the kind of it's kind of implied the uh, the family were all uh, inbreeding and things like this. And, you know, Alexander Dodorio looks like she is not the product of inbreeding. Let me just say this. And then we have this, um, the, the concept here where she's got tracked down by her grandmother, her real grandmother. And I think, how? How has that happened? I, I can't see any way that that would have happened. I mean, it's just, it's just, oh, she had some detectives look at it. But like, I mean, this baby, it's, at the beginning of the movie, we see that the, 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 the mother was like murdered by one of these vigilantes and this baby was kidnapped with no one witnessing it. So how the hell, and this, you know, the, the character of Heather does not know that she's like, not the kind of the natural uh, daughter of these kind of people. How is anyone supposed to kind of uh, know that that was, you know, not a legit, with, with no witnesses? It doesn't make sense. It's just kind of skipped over. I think at least you should have had someone sort of like, like Leatherface kind of like looking out and kind of seeing these people, um, you know, kick, take this baby, but no. You know, so it, it doesn't start off on the great foot with um, being silly. And there are elements throughout the movie where, you know, they... The typical kind of like dumb teenagery kind of decisions are made, all that sort of thing, you know. And there's there's points where you can you can be a little bit forgiving of that because that's kind of the trope with with especially slasher horror films. But then we have to talk about the third act, and I'm not going to try and out and out spoil what happens. But ultimately, this is where it really leans into um, you know kind of trying to project like specifically Leatherface but the kind of the Sawyer family at large as well to a degree as victims and almost kind of tries to make you want to sort of root for them. Now the problem is here is that the character of Leatherface is technically speaking Alexandra Dodario's character Heather's cousin right uh, which she discovers kind of late in the movie. But, like, as soon as she finds that out, she kind of has this kinship with him, despite the fact that, that Leatherface has literally just chainsawed all her friends to death and obviously has, has killed people in the original movie as well, which this is a direct sequel of. But we're kind of like... The, it, the movie frames it like... Um, like he's, like, this kind of somewhat kind of innocent victim in all of this. And I'm thinking... I don't know if that really, really works, to be honest. I mean, if, I think if you had better filmmakers here, better writing, you could have had a degree of subtlety with that. But I think the movie trying to frame um, this kind of, you know, Leatherface and then uh, Heather's kind of very quick kind of decision to uh, have this kind of relationship with, with, with him and almost just forget about all the kind of the, the killings that he has done. I mean, we get some kind of like secondary villains because of this, but I don't know. It doesn't really, it didn't really <laughs> work out quite right to me. Uh, it doesn't really seem really that kind of plausible or, or, or clever in any way, really. So I think that was kind of let down. Um, now, the, the third act in general, I think, is a little, is probably the weakest act here. Uh, and it's also coupled with some sort of not quite as clever story elements, let's just say. 
and um, I don't know, outside of that kind of leather face reveal and everything. But also, I have to say that they've plussed the kind of the practical effects with some CGI here. Now, this is a 2013 movie, um, and I, I, you know, so we have to bear that in mind. But the CGI kind of like enhancement with blood and stuff is certainly noticeable now in 2023 when I'm kind of watching this uh, for the first set of time. So, you know, there, there are some unnecessary CGI tweaks, which I think kind of stand out a little bit, particularly uh, at the end there. There is some, there's some ideas of kind of some quite kind of brutal deaths, but it's kind of like loose impact because there's kind of CGI kind of involved a little bit too too much to be honest in my opinion. Um, so you know it's it's an entertaining movie, but it is incredibly silly, and then there's there, you know it has very much like uh, very obvious tropes in it, like you know we have these kind of characters go to this house and her best friend is there with her boyfriend, and of course the best friend is secretly sleeping with the boyfriend, although that doesn't really amount to much, to be honest. Uh, you know, so it's like, oh, it's these sort of typical things. It's always like a love triangle in these sort of films. Like, oh. So, you know, I, I was entertained by this movie, but I don't know if it's anything other than a kind of, um, uh, you know, an average movie, to be honest with you, because it's just like, I have to say the writing is certainly the weakest part for me here. Uh, but it's an entertaining movie. Um, I, I, I think, to be honest with you, the, the, the remake is, is better than this. Uh, the 2003 remake. So I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.